you know, there are three components to this, this uh, ballot question. Raising the minimum wage, linking future increases to the national CPI, and putting this, memorializing this into our Constitution. We have three issues embedded into one. And obviously, if it's passed, you inherit all three. If it's not passed, um, two of the three hopefully will go away, and I would almost be assured that the legislature will take up in legislative session an increase in the minimum wage. Our, our organization, the New Jersey Chamber of Commerce, we are not against the minimum wage increase. We backed uh, the governor's plan of increasing the minimum wage a dollar over three years. Our only issue is using the, uh, linking it to the CPI and using the Constitution, <clears throat> which is absolutely not necessary in this case. This is a legislative issue. It should be legislated as every other increase has been uh, put into the uh, wage uh, realm of New Jersey. Uh, and it doesn't meet the constitutional uh, stat or the constitutional language, which, which says that for the Constitution to be amended by the legislature, it has to fit the public good. This, at best, is going to impact 3% of the population of New Jersey. By our estimate, it's one-tenth to 1%, one but I know Gordon's number, I'll go with that, which is 3%. Does 3% of the population being impacted by this issue represent the public good of New Jersey? Absolutely not. This is wrong. It should not happen. It's going to have some long-term economic problems for the state of New Jersey. It's going to impact our competitiveness. Uh, and it's just a wrong way to do it. And it can be done legislatively. If this is defeated, it probably uh, almost as surely will be done legislatively. So the issue of helping the working poor with a minimum wage increase can be accomplished in a very logical and historical way legislatively, as I said before. We are all for that approach. And, uh, but just not through the Constitution. Your response, yeah. Gordon? Uh, no wonder they're in favor of, the, uh, of, of defeating the amendment because if you look back to 2007, the last time the minimum wage was increased, which uh, puts it on a roller coaster and we're on the downward side of it, that $7.25 is worth $6.43 today given inflation. So if it's such a small group of people who are affected, why the uh, fanfare? If it's uh, oh, if it's forty thousand in Tom's uh, county, this invades excuse the me, Constitution. Let, I let you finish, Tom. Uh, the uh, quarter of a million people will benefit directly from this. That's uh, close to six percent of the workforce in the state, and it will it will put in place something to correct this uh, political football game that is played, where frankly the business groups almost uniformly oppose any sort of of effort to catch up with inflation. It, you're relying on an imperfect, yes, it would be better if it went through the legislature and were signed by the governor, but the, uh, but the compromise the governor proposed would take so long, it, it would not address the, uh, the needs of people who are in desperate need and are working full time frequently and are not able to, to survive in New Jersey. So let me see if I get this straight. Theoretically, you're backing the idea of raising the minimum wage through the legislature, and theoretically, you're not necessarily comfortable with the notion that it has to be linked to the Constitution and, and <clears throat> recurring automatic locked-in increases? Mike, the, uh, the, the perfect is frequently the enemy of the good, right? So as we're familiar with what's going on in Washington, this is a pretty untidy business called democracy. Yes, it would be best if it went through the legislature and were signed by the governor. So that, that's, the not possible. that's not possible given the terms that the governor set. And he's firm about that. So the legislature took the next step. And now the question is before us. Are you going to lend a helping hand to people who are striving to try and grab the bottom rung or not? I, you know, nobody's opposed to helping people at, quote, the bottom rung. But, you know, even if you use Gordon's number of 6%, the Constitution, Gordon, states that the legislature is allowed to change the Constitution for something that is in the, in the public good. This is not, th these are our founding principles of New Jersey under which the citizens of New Jersey operate. The, the minimum wage issue that impacts at most, I'll use your number, 6%, is that the public good? This is, n once you start to invade our Constitution, look what happened in California. You wrote an article about what happened in California. Though. What's the threshold for public good? I have if no it's not idea, 3%, but I know 6% is It would have to be a majority, or, or where have, would it be? Mike, I have no idea what that is, but I can tell you 6% is not it. Plus, no, no, plus to put it, this into the Constitution, 
the, the, the long-term negative impacts on our state's competitiveness, on our ability to, to increase jobs and help the economy, which is the panacea to all of New Jersey's <coughs> economic problems, this impacts all of that. It's, it's a very sensitive thing that has a short, possible short-term gain and very long-term consequences to New Jersey. Wait, right. Tom would like us to see a state that is seeking to have low-wage jobs no located way. here. Well, no but way. this affects people That's who totally employ. wrong. Excuse, you know, I'd like to let you fin let me finish just one, okay, Tom? So, you have you have a, a situation where the business lobbyists are saying, "Gee, if we pass this, then we're not going to be able to draw new jobs to New Jersey." Well, we don't want jobs that are at the lowest end. That's not what we're looking for. And so, if the if the large employers don't want to locate $7.25 or $8.50 jobs in New Jersey, fine. We're looking for jobs that actually will attract highly compensated, highly educated people who contribute to the economy and pr produce other jobs for people. We're not looking for $8.25 jobs. totally agree with that. Now let me just define something about that. The best source of new jobs in New Jersey are the middle market and small businesses in New Jersey that are here that want to expand and stay here and grow here and prosper here. They are the people who are the most, the most logical uh, companies to have job increases. There are 350,000 companies that are defined as small and middle market businesses in, in New Jersey. If only one out of 10 added one job a year, that's 35,000 jobs a year in New Jersey. That's a huge number. And the problem we have is that when the National Federation of Independent Businesses polled their members, all made up of middle market and small businesses in New Jersey, 93% of these, of these organizations said, don't do this this way because it locks us down. It's going gonna, it's gonna to force us to do some very uncomfortable things, which are raise prices, cut the hours back on people we have working for us, lay off people or not hire people, or all of the above. Do, are we, you worried, Gordon, about any of that? There's just no evidence, no credible evidence that increasing the minimum wage at this level will decrease employment. There's just none. And so if you look at the nine states that uh, increased their minimum wage on January 1st, 2012, many of whom had the uh, built-in escalator as a part of the law, there's no difference in terms of job increases and decreases between those nine states and the 41 states that didn't. So in the real world, this sort of Fear, fearful, fear mongering say, uh, statement that we're going to lose jobs. I don't know about, about you, Tom, but if I look at the small businesses that I patronize, whether I'm getting pizza or filling my gas tank or getting my suits pressed, very few of them employ 50 people. If you look at the people who are the businesses that are benefiting from the minimum wage, 56% uh, of them employ more than 50 people in New Jersey. Nationally, the number is more than 60% employ 100 or more. So this is not the kind of small business story that is rolled out when something like this comes up. In fact, uh, most, of the, most of the businesses that are affected by this are pretty big businesses. Only about 30 seconds, last word. It's, it's, talk, it, it's called wage creep. Minimum wage goes up, other wages go up. It's, it's a logical thing. And Gord, I would ask you to read today's editorial in the Wall Street Journal. It debunks all these, these statistical theories and empirical studies that say that a, an increase in the minimum wage does not reduce jobs. It's in the Wall Street Journal today, a very well-written article that kind of highlights the issues we have. And again, this is an issue that just does not belong in, to be invaded into our Constitution. It's a sacred document that has no place in our Constitution. Well, I hope New Jersey voters do not rely on the judgment of the Wall Street Journal editorial page. Gentlemen, uh, extraordinary conversation. I appreciate it. You've given us a real, a lot to think about. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. you.